No. Mm-hmm. Seriously? Yeah. You're kidding me. No, oh no, my God. Never my white kid is done. That's it. There's <laughs> nothing else to achieve. Seriously. Yeah, oh my God. <laughs> That's amazing. So, Lorraine, I am so excited to talk to you about your first work of fiction, yeah. The Island Swimmer. So to start with, you said you had these characters yeah. flying around your head, but what was it that came to you first about this book? Was it a particular character? Was it a bit of plot or the place? I think it was mostly, well, Orkney. It was always going to be in Orkney. It's mm-hmm. one of my favourite places on the planet. I do hope that people will fall in love with Orkney when they yeah. read the book because it's very much a character, mm-hmm. a really important character, if you like, if you like, in the book. At the heart of it, really, though, was this relationship between the sisters. I don't have a sister, but I do have a brother and we did not get on well when we were little because I was six and I was a spoiled princess. And along came this angel child from Central Casting with massive blue eyes and curly hair (laughs) and he was fat and he was gorgeous. And and my mum, still to this day, oh, people used to stop me in the street (laughs) when I was pushing your brother and his brother. So we loathed each other when we Mm -hmm. were younger. And then, as we're older, now he's one of my best friends. You know, I love him as a brother, but I really like him. And the two don't always go hand in hand. You can love your sibling, but not like them all that much. So the whole idea of that would be very much at the heart of it. And what happens when that goes awry and really toxic? You know, that, that was part of it, as well as this thing of leaving somewhere that you love, being forced to or you think you have, because there's a lot of twists in in the book, Um, and then coming back to rebuild bridges. And nobody in the book is all good and all bad, because no person on this world is is like that. So although Evie is, if you like, the the main character, um, she's infuriating. You know, I want her to leave that awful, toxic relationship that she's in when she leaves Orkney. And, you know, sometimes I do want to shake her. Um, So, yeah, she can be really annoying. Liv, her sister does terrible things, terrible, terrible things. But you can understand why she's like that, you know, when she when she get into the book. So mm-hmm. that was very much part of it. I wanted to see these full rounded characters and you understand why that person is the way they are. You know, for me, the heart of the book really is Freya. I, I love Freya. Yeah, I she, love, I love Freya. her. She's just, I want her to be my friend. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she's full of all the kindness in the world. So kind, so, but she can't help but being a little bit of a busybody. Yeah. She can't help herself, you know. She just wants everybody to be happy. She yeah. just wants everybody to, to get on. She just wants everybody to live their best life, you know. She's the one that says to Evie, you've got to start painting again. You mm. know, you're, you're very talented. You must do these things. You must, you, she's always going on about you must heal. You must, you, you must get better. Better. Um, and I and I was I really wanted her, you know, she is trans, yeah. but it's no big deal. It's yeah. just part of it's not doesn't define her. It's just part of who she is. And it's a part of who she is that she's left behind her a long time ago and she's just got on with her life. Mm. And it was very important for me to show that that is absolutely possible. Mm. You know, you don't of course, if you're a trans person, you go through a you know, you I say it in the book, mm. you're going to walk a very, very hard road. Um, and you're going to need a lot of support and people round about you. And I thought it was important to show that, you know, as a, as a when Freya was Magnus as a kid, mm. um, that people did. They were just like, oh, yeah, that's my, oh, yeah, that's Magnus. Oh, whatever, you know, he wears his sister's dress. So what? So what? And, and it, there is a big so what? Yeah. And I love that because we're all just trying to go on with our lives. It doesn't matter, you know, what your sexuality is. It shouldn't. Yeah. You should just be allowed to be you. Um, and people should accept you mm. and, you know, and you should be allowed to be you. That's that's yeah. all. And Freya says that in the book. You know, she says, I'm I'm Freya. I'm not Freya, a trans woman. I'm just me. Mm. <laughs> just accept me for who yeah. I am. You know, and, and the fact that she'd had relationships in the past where she felt a wee bit like somebody's badge of honour and she didn't like that. She just wanted to be accepted for herself. Yeah. And I like that. So tell me more about Orkney. Why is that a special place for you? Well, I went to Orkney first in the 80s. And you know, sometimes, so a wee bit like when I went to Antarctica, South Georgia in particular, and I landed and I thought, yep, okay, this is my place. I'm very happy. (laughs) This is like Scotland with penguins (laughs) and icebergs. I am ecstatically happy here. And it was the same in Orkney back in the 80s. I went there to do um, some filming um, and I'd always wanted to go to Orkney. I also, you know, read a lot about it, read a lot about the history and went up there and did a, a travel piece. You know, we did the usual, you know, all of these amazing ancient artifacts that and ancient places and sites that go way before the pyramids were built, um, to, to the World War II, you know, 
all of that history as well, um, to the rich cultural heritage, to the fact that it's the shortest flight in the world from Westry to Papa Westry. It's a minute. <laughs> don't, 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 it's a minute. <laughs> I know. The pilot was doing his, his landing checks before he was taking off. I mean, it's, it's crazy. So all of this, all of this, as well as the best food in the world, best booze in the world, amazing whiskey, amazing gin, all the rest of it. Fantastic culture, you know, really amazing. They do a great festival up there, uh, the St Magnus Festival in the summer, and it attracts, you know, orchestras from all over the world and, and, and choirs from all over the world. Beautiful. And I just thought, oh, I like this. This will do. So we just kept going back. So we've yeah. gone back every year, apart from the dreaded COVID years. We didn't mm. get back. But we go back every single summer. Rosie um, was just about walking, just starting to walk. When she was a baby, she started to really walk properly on the island of Shappensea, mm -hmm. which is 20 minutes from Kirkwall. It's just over. It was just a tiny ferry trip. So it's wee things like that that you remember all the time. But Are there any Orkney words that you wanted to get into? The well, I, I could have so many, mm -hmm. so, so many. But I thought, you know, I'll, I'll probably do more in the second book. The main word that I use, PD, is small. Mm -hmm. And it's and PD is like, it's so descriptive, isn't it? Because of course it is small. Yeah. And the Orkney accent, I couldn't attempt it. It's beautiful. Mm. It's beautiful. I just sometimes I am very happy just sitting in a cafe in Orkney, just eerie wigging, listening to people, <laughs> not listening to their conversations necessarily yeah. to get the gossip. I just love to hear them talking. It's mm. gorgeous. Um, and you were talking about your main character, Evie, before. And you write in multiple timelines in yes, this book. Yes, yes. I so, hope not too many time jumps. No, not too I many. Hope definitely not. not. I, wasn't I don't sure. think so. Okay, good. Um, uh, but I wondered, writing Evie at so many different ages, mm. at what age was Evie in your head when you begun? Probably she was a teenager, I mm -hmm. think, just before the terrible bad thing happened. Um, and then I actually found that quite easy-ish to write. Um, I found the the time that she's in a terrible relationship quite difficult because, again, you know, I've had lots of friends who've been in the same boat, sadly, who've been with, with people who haven't treated them well um, at all. And, and there is that thing of, why don't you just leave? I think it was more difficult to write about Evie when she was in that dreadful, toxic relationship. And, you know, I was like, get out of this, you know, get out of this. I mean, it, it, it was somebody who was chipping away at her confidence, chipping away at her self-esteem, you know, making her deeply unhappy. It's very easy for friends and for people outside of that to say, get out, you know, just get out, leave. And of course, if somebody's been battered, of course, you have to try and help. But it's hard when you're the person in that. Mm. And I learned a lot, you know, that's luckily never happened to me, but I know a lot of people that that's happened to, men and women who've been in situations like that and, and who've desperately wanted to get out, but they can't, you know, because they've been manipulated mm. and they've been destroyed. Um, so it was important to, you know, to put that rounded version of it in there. That it's not that easy. It's yeah. not that easy. And another of the, the themes or things that comes out in the book is grief. And there's yeah. quite a bit of grief in the book. It is. So I wondered why you wanted to lean into that. I think we all grieve, we all lose something. You know, all of us will experience loss. Of course we will, whether it's profound loss, like the death of somebody you love, or whether it's the loss of something that's very important to you. Um, you know, it could be a job, it could be... A relationship, a friendship, you know, that the person is not necessarily no longer with you, but maybe things have happened and they're not there. And I think it's important how we how we deal with that and we have to face up to it. And I think, do you know, I think all that we went through with COVID made us maybe more aware of that and, yeah. and maybe more aware of the suffering of other people. You know, certainly I I very much so. And, and, and I guess doing this job as well, you know, I've had to talk to an awful lot of people who've gone through the most appalling times. They've managed to come out of it. They've managed somehow to live with that pain and to live with all of that suffering. And I'm very interested in that, the resilience yeah. of, of human beings, you know, how they, they do. You don't ever get over it. You never get over losing somebody, but you just somehow can eventually, you know, the pain becomes less intense. It's always there, but you you somehow manage to to live your life and, and, and go forward. And, and that's hard. And I did want to deal with that because I think that affects all, it will affect all of us. If it hasn't affected you yet, inevitably it will. It's just a fact of being a human being. Yeah. 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 And was it important for you to show that 
that light that you can experience the joy while yeah, there's grief. I think so. I think we've all got to concentrate on that. That's very much what I, I tried to do that in the book. I tried to do that on, on my show, even when we've got someone who's who's been through something awful. I always try and find a bit of light, you know, and, and we tried to do that. Like all during the pandemic, I was I came into work every single day. I was very lucky. I was allowed to do that. It was a very different show because we had no guests. We just zoomed. <laughs> Amazing sense of freedom, though, because we'd go, what are they doing in the International Space Station? Let's try and get a link up to them. And it was easier mm. because we didn't have all the gubbings of cameras and all the rest of it. What are they doing in the Falklands? What's happening in the you know the stations in Antarctica? Is that the only continent free of the pandemic? Yes, it is. Let's talk to them. How are they feeling? You know, weird because you know in Antarctica you you might as well be in outer space. You know, when really mm. it's it's astonishing. And what would you say that the writing has given you that's different to what the TV work gives you? Oh, that's a really really good question. Um, I think the writing is a lot more personal. Obviously, you know, I've I've really put myself in there. You know, I put my heart and soul into it and. You know, like I've loved it and now it's out in the world and it's like your child, people will judge. <laughs> and nobody wants their child to be judged. <laughs> they really don't. Unless it's, you know, unless it's like, hey, you are marvellous. Um, so that that is quite daunting. Mm. It really is. Because, you know, when we do a show in the morning, we, we sort of know if it's worked or not. We all know what works and what doesn't work. And things go awry. Of course they do. It's live telly. Sometimes things go a bit awry. We've got to change things round and whatever. Um, but we've always got the chance to do it the next day. Mm. You know, we do a show, oh, that didn't quite work. Or, mm, yeah. Oh, that was great. Let's do that again. Let's do that in a slightly different way. Mm, you know, that, all of that sort of stuff. Uh-uh, that's out now. Mm. I cannot do anything about it. <laughs> it is out there. I can't change anything. I wanted to, I mean, I, you know, right up until the 11th hour, I was kind of mm. like making a few changes. And there will be a few howlers, of course, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, that that's the difference, that it's mm. there. Yeah. John Cooper Clark always says that about his poetry, yeah. that when he's performing it, he can change it. He can see oh, what the reaction is. But as soon as he's put it in a book, he's like, oh. It's out there. There's nothing you can do. You've yeah. done all that you can. Yeah, so it's an interesting <laughs> And it really comparison. is just up to people. And of course, not everybody's going to like it. Of course it's not. You've got to accept that. But um, I, re I just hope that people will enjoy the story. Yeah. You know, um, it's, it's, it's all about the story. I mean, the, the best storyteller was Maeve Binchy by A Country Mile. I <laughs> love 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 her books mm. they I, I i go back to them again and again and again she is the the master you mm. know i can't I, I still talk about her in the present tense i can't believe mm. she's not here and i remember her interviewing her years ago and then um, and she sent me a little a little note to say thank you for the interview nobody does that she sent me that and it's framed it's <laughs> framed on the wall of my loo frankly <laughs> because then more people can see it <laughs> <Love them. laughs> And that, to me, that's one of the yeah. things I'm most proud of, that Maeve Binchy sent me a note years and years and years ago you know, just to say thank you. When you Google your book on um, on Audible or when you search yeah. it up, similar books comes up of Maeve Binchy. No. Mm -hmm. Seriously? Yeah. You're kidding me? No, oh, no my God. Of life. My work is done. That's it. There's <laughs> nothing else to achieve. Seriously? Yeah, oh, my God. <laughs> that's amazing. Bloody hell. Oh, take that. Jeez, that's brilliant. Thank you for that. You cheered me up no end. You made my day, my month, my year. <laughs> so how are you finding narrating the audiobook? What has it been like? I've loved narrating the audiobook because it's where you pick up all the wee things that aren't quite right as mm. well. Um, and at first I wasn't sure, like, obviously I'm not going to attempt an Orkney accent and I'm not going to attempt, you know, one of my characters is, is a big Polish hairy arse man. I'm not going to attempt to him, but I, I've been, I have been sort of thinking to myself, well, you don't want to just read it straight. You've got to put emotion into it and all of that. So I've actually found that really good. I've enjoyed the whole process. Um, and I love an audiobook. I love an audiobook. I listen to them all the time. I was delighted to, to, to do an audiobook. And again, I'm so looking forward to the feedback. Slightly apprehensive, but still <laughs> wanting to know what people think. Because, of course, you, you're not doing this for me. Mm. I'm doing this for readers and listeners, you know. Yeah. And so you've written fiction, you've written non-fiction, but what is it that you like to read and listen to? What are your go-to oh, I Honestly, I have to read a lot of books for work. Yeah, of course. Um, which I actually see as a perk, because yeah. oftentimes it's maybe it's a book that I might not have read. And yeah. I like that. I like that to being open to other things. You know, so you, you get someone like Marion will come in, but Marion Keys will come in and you've got, you've got a book before everyone else. Yes. Fantastic. 
is that? I mean, that really is yeah. the massive, massive perk. Or something like Michael Palin, who I absolutely mm. adore and writes the most astonishing books. Really, really good. Full of facts. You know, fantastic. Love all that. Um, I read anything about Antarctica, anything about Ernest Shackleton. Um, I love to read that. Um, and I do go back to books that I read when I was a kid, you know, like George Orwell, um, all the Russians, you know, because I studied Russian at school and, and I, I read, you know, just ate all these books that were uh, probably a lot of it was going over my head and it's actually good to revisit that yeah but I, I do I love all all kinds of books I'm a, a voracious reader I've always got a book in my bag or I'm always listening to something on audible so it's it's brilliant that we've got that opportunity it's yeah. just great isn't it yeah <laughs> and you have said that there is a book two coming yes so is it a sequel would you say or is it more standalone what's um, what's the vibe I think it Yes, I think it will be a sequel in that the characters that you've grown to know and hopefully love will be there and mm -hmm. it'll be the next stage. But there will be others in there. There's going to be a, a huge, huge, massive twist in this one that I hope nobody sees coming. <laughs> um, and, and a character that I don't think MD's going to like very much. <laughs> but that's OK. Like I say, nobody's, you know, nobody's all bad and all good. People are rounded but yeah there will be there will be a lot of there, there's loose ends in this and they need to be tied up mm -hmm. they need to be tidied <laughs> and i've got unfinished business for sure very exciting <laughs> well lorraine thank you so much oh thank you such a pleasure to chat. <laughs> thank you very much